we have a treat here today, Stacy Berenfuss. Um, she is the CEO and founder of Catalyst Group, a creator of the Limitless Real Realtor Circle. Circle. I'm having a hard time here today, Stacy. So maybe you can help me out. Um, but you really provide a lot of training programs for realtors, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, I'm really interested in up leveling the standard for realtors across the board. Sure. But what we're going to really try to focus on today is that I know you are kind of a, I hate to say mindset junkie, but uh, uh, I really think, like I've mentioned, we've had a ton of great guests on our show, but we haven't really been doing that mindset in, injection that we need here right now. And, and that's what I'm kind of leaning on you for here today. Help us a little bit with that. Yes, I'm happy to be here today, Jack, and definitely excited to share that aspect. So before we start anything off, I always want to make sure that we give everybody your contact information. So if they want, if they like what we like, what they hear, where would they find you? What's some of the best places to get a hold of you? Yeah. So I wanted to make it simple. So my website is best limitless with Stacy B like boy.com. Mm -hmm. So limitless with Stacy B.com. Well, we'll make sure we have that in the show notes. But let's start things off and talk about a couple things. Um, you know, with real, let's start with realtors and investors in general, um, because there seems to be a slight, uh, I don't know, a little apprehension in working with each other. Mm, yeah. um, a little, little conflict there, maybe. And, and frankly, I, I'm a little blind to that. I'm not sure exactly why that is. But uh, how can we both get along, if you will? <laughs> yeah, that's such a great question. So I have a question for you so I can answer this fully. What do you see as the conflict most often, just from your perspective? Because, of course, I have my perspective. <laughs> well, I, you know, more times than not, you know, I, I think it, for us anyway, we've had, we have a lot of different relationships. Um, especially with the different realtors and and depending on the scenario, we kind of adapt to the to the to that uh, person and what they 're looking to get out of out of this professional relationship for the most part, you know especially when you 're starting off in which a lot of our real our investors are relatively new to real estate investing they 're typically looking for realtors to help them. Uh, not to find some of those properties off the MLS, of course. Mm -hmm. But we've actually had some uh, realtors, especially when we first started off, basically say, no, I can't, I can't submit that offer. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Or, um, yeah, they're, they're almost like they're, they're too, they're more protective of their perceived professionalism than, than helping the investor out. Am I, does okay. that make sense? It does, absolutely, yeah. So that's definitely something that I see, you know, in that investor-realtor relationship and, of course, in other situations with realtors across the board. And what I think is most important on the real estate side is for real estate agents to remember that it's not about them, it's about the client. Mm -hmm. And if you represent your client and stay committed to excellence, your reputation will precede you, right? It will be a positive one in the marketplace. Um, and so just because you write a lower offer doesn't mean, you know, that your reputation is affected. Um, my approach with investors and, um, you know, with my real estate agents is all that the seller can say is they can say no, right? There's no other risk by submitting this offer. And the more that you can detail out why you're offering that price, the more that it's, it's not a personal, you know, attack or, you know, something that could go negative, you're justifying the offer to the other side in a very detailed manner. Um, the other thing I think is to, you know, eliminate conflict with realtors and investors is as an investor, just making sure that the real estate agent you are selecting is well versed in working with investors and has that experience because a lot of times um, you know investors are going to 
you know, meet with a real estate agent and they're relying heavily on them for their expertise, but that real estate agent may have, you know, never reviewed a pro forma or some sort of, you know, market analysis on rent. So just making sure that, you know, you vet that a little bit to make sure that you're protected. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's all great tips, you know, in fact, you know, if I'm going to flip it on you a little bit, there's, yeah. there's, there's a couple times where I've been asked by realtors how they can, how they can help us. And, mm -hmm. uh, and more times than not, I'm usually asking, you know, how, how I can help them um, with what, what they're trying to achieve. Uh, one of the low hanging fruits that it, it seems like uh, some realtors just aren't aware of them or uh, they're a little gun shy is that uh, definitely check out the local real estate investing meetups. Even if you're not an investor yourself, go there a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, you would be surprised at what you not only will, will learn, but the connections you can make. That's a great suggestion. Yes. So, um, but I, you know, I wanted to talk to you. I, your domain name is, is the perfect segue. What was that domain name again? If people wanted to find you limitless. Limitless with Stacy B.com. Uh, limitless with Stacy Stacy B. I I read in your in some of the, the the stuff they sent over is regarding your limitless mindset, how to approach life and business to become a magnet for opportunities. If you want to call anything, we're probably going to spend the rest of the episode on that one sentence. <laughs> what do, what does that mean? Like uh, that limitless mindset, I think, is so important. How do you get into that, that proper mindset? Yeah, I think it's, the, and it's such a great segue, like you said, off of what we were just talking about, because so often in real estate, you know, agents are focused on survival and because they're focused on survival, they are making decisions based out of scarcity versus empowerment and, you know, faith and a positive mindset. And that's, I mean, consistent with any sales kind of, you know, an atmosphere or career path because you, you know, don't know when that next sale is going to happen. And that can be, a, you know, a question. And so the first thing to do is to, you know, acknowledge that's how you're approaching things. If your mindset, you know, is, is in the dumps, if you will, on that and, and make a decision to consciously be aware of where you're coming from and flip that to serve the client and contribute to the situation. So mm -hmm. um, when you ask, you know, that question, how can I contribute? How can I serve this for the highest and best good of everyone involved? You get a completely different answer compared to if, you know, you're asking, how can I get this house sold? How can I, you know, give this person into a contract by Wednesday? It's a completely different approach. Um, Additionally, when you're operating in that space, you aren't stressed. And stressed, I, I mean, you know, internally, you're not, you know, aggravated and chaotic. You're able to, you know, process things from a more calm, spacious state because mm -hmm. you're in that mindset. Right. You know, this, this, this conversation reminds me of a book called The Go-Giver. Yes, that's a great book. Yeah. Um, and, and it is like when you get, you get into that proper mindset set of giving, that's when things start happening. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I really appreciate that, that level of thought. Um, and uh, what I think what people don't talk about too much is that when, when you get into that type of proper mindset, there are other rewards that eventually start coming that you don't, you don't realize. Right. things actually start to expand and it becomes limitless, like you said. Yep, it does. Yeah. And what's so interesting <clears throat> is struggles that you may have had for years in one area or even, you know, struggle that you've had just in 2020, all of a sudden things start to break loose. And that's when you really become that magnet for opportunities is, you know, when you're serving and focused on what you can contribute, People want to be around that. People are attracted to that. And it's for the good of the whole, which if we have that focus, it's a, it's a limitless game. That truly is. Yeah. 
So earlier you, you mentioned basically us being, uh, I think it's a human trait, right? We, we react instead of being proactive. You know, we just have a tendency of reacting out of scarcity and fear versus mm -hmm. Uh, what could possibly be like, how does somebody change in your opinion? How can they change that point of view and that mindset to be more, instead of being so reactive? Yeah, I think the first thing is, you know, understanding that that is where you're coming from, right? We first have to see where we are if we want to make any changes. And, um, you know, sometimes that can be the most challenging piece, but just, you know, asking yourself, you know, what, what am I doing that's contributing to this situation? Or, you know, what am I not doing that, you know, is holding, holding me back or limiting in, me in some way? So I think having the approach more from a, a place of inquiry with yourself, you know, versus judgment is, is definitely a huge step, although it seems simple talking about it, a huge mm -hmm. step um, to get that process going forward. Sure. So, um, you know, uh, let's talk a little, let's shift the conversation a little bit about some of the benefits people could possibly experience outside of, you know, the, the mindset. Like as a realtor, when you start to live with the, with the concept of collaborating and uh, limitless possibilities, what are some of those other benefits associated with, with that type of mindset? So definitely, you know, you have more energy because you're not, you know, you're just operating at another level. It's, it's an energized, you're fueling yourself because you're coming from that positive state. How mm -hmm. you? um, you're definitely more open to opportunities, possibilities. Therefore, you'll notice in the marketplace, you'll get random calls more often. That's something that I, I notice a lot is, you know, all of a sudden, someone I haven't talked to for over a year will call and say, Hey, check out this, this property. And it's something that I was looking into six months ago. You know, that, that fun of synchronicity that, that we all, you know, enjoy the surprises in life. Um, I mean, better health, better relationships, you know, when, again, when you're in that state, people want to be around you and it's, it, you're not only fueling yourself first, but that fuel and energy, you know, contributes to everyone you are around and mm -hmm. um, lifts them up too. You know, you really talk like you've had a lot of, ex like there's some mileage, mileage here regarding some experience. Like, did you, are you, you always had this type of mindset or have you had to work your way into this type of mindset? And what was that? What did that road look like? Yeah, so I, I always was told as a kid, you know, you can do anything you set your mind to. So that was, you know, that deep programming. But um, I absolutely had to condition myself, you know, once I was an adult to step into this. And so I started, you know, when I was 18 years old, I, I was introduced to The Secret. It was a popular thing at that mm -hmm. time. And um, I, I just, I literally watched it every day for about six months because it was, there were concepts in that movie that I had not been exposed to. And I, you know, I just was able to see a different way of, you know, dealing with things and being clear inside so that opportunities can, you know, come your way, positive, positive thinking, but also, you know, the action and intention behind that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would say like the, the computer software was like there, you know, but it had to be upgraded to actually work. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I, the reason I ask is that, you know, I think we're all kind of wired a little differently. And, and for me, it's like, I'm constantly to, to maintain any kind of level of mindset. I have to really work. It's, it's, it's almost a daily task. I have to, I'm constantly listening to podcasts or I'm constantly listening to audiobooks. to the chagrin of my family. I'm walking around the house with something playing in my pocket, you know, like an audio book or something coming out of my phone. Um, yeah. So what, what kind of things do you do? What kind of actions do you do to just kind of keep things at least maintain maintenance level? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love that you shared that just because that's the truth, you know, success, people are watering their garden with 
tools every day, right? Whether it's podcast books, um, you know, morning or daily routines um, mm -hmm. to keep that going. And so I, I look at mindset very much like a being almost, you know, it needs food and water and um, time, you know, investment to keep going. And so um, I every day incorporate, you know, meditation, um, gratitude, reviewing my short and long-term goals, and making sure that I'm moving forward on a book that is on my list to complete in the year, um, even if it's 10 minutes, you know, getting through a, a few pages of the book, just so that I have a blocked out time where it's quiet. For me, the, the early mornings work really well. And so I, I have that daily routine that uh, just preps and primes me for the day to, you know, be successful. And I think, and just like you shared, you know, as a successful entrepreneur, I think that's just part of the gig to have mm -hmm. that routine. Well, I, you know, part of me thinks that I think some, some people miss that aspect is that we work as real estate investors, we work so hard on the next property or investment or, you know, for realtors, I'm sure it's the same too, finding the next opportunity or the next deal. We spend all that time and energy and invest, quote unquote, investment into all of these activities. But one of the biggest rewarding investment we can make is, is setting a little time aside for yourself and, and bettering yourself. Yeah, very well said. You know, I think that it's, something that's more, it's becoming more and more a part of the conversation, you know, making those deposits, if you will, into your personal like, well-being bank account to be able to, you know, play at the level you want to play currently. So, you know, you, you meant, you talked a little bit about mean, meaningfulness and, and even doing uh, some meditation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, some of this stuff is, you know, when it comes to meditation, for example, that's a new concept for me. Like, you know, uh, like, can you talk a little bit like how that's incorporated in your life? And, and, uh, you know, I, I don't mean to turn this into some sort of meditation lesson, but how, how does one of one go about do, <laughs> incorporating yeah. that? Yeah, you know, it's, I, I think I, I started looking at meditation as I look at, um, you know, a pro forma for an investment property. And, and, you know, meditation is very much contemplation and reflection as much as it is what we envision, you know, sitting on a hill in a foreign country, you know, meditating in quiet. Mm. For, for weeks. Um, but I like to simplify everything that I experience so that I can pass the knowledge along to anyone, any walk of life and be able to relate. And so meditation is something that can be as simple as three deep breaths in and out and you know even doing that for three minutes that same kind of thing so a deep inhalation and then as slow as you can on the exhalation and you'll notice that your shoulders will, will start to drop you know relax mm -hmm. when you start that process and the the purpose of that is one to connect to yourself because that's foreign for us as humans we're meant to you know we're, we're taught to connect externally first. Um, so connecting to ourselves and then you'll notice your mind start to calm. Now there's always times that that, that changes every moment, you know, one, one day, you know, super busy day ahead, your mind could just be going you know, a million miles a, a second. Um, mm. And so just knowing that that's okay um, is really important. And so going then into, you know, taking those deep breaths, calming your mind, and then being able to reflect on what's working, what you're grateful for, and taking that time to reflect and contemplate um, is a very important part of, of meditation. So that's, that's what I do each day to just keep it simple. And then I can build on it from there. Sure. No, you know, and, and I, I think I, it's, you know, I'll have to forgive my ignorance when it comes to, to, to that, you know, it's, it's uh, a lot of the stuff that I've been doing over the past few years, you know, and, and meditation is, you know, in, in some regards, I guess I've, I have been doing some, some meditation. People probably just don't even realize that that's what it's called. Um, the, the, if you would have asked me, you know, six years ago, 
regarding whole mindset and everything else, I would have said it was a bunch of hooey, you know, it's just, you know, but now I'm, you know, reading and consuming anything I can get my hands on. So it's just, uh, there is a significant change that occurs in not, in not only your mindset, but the, the act, actions and activity that you embark on. Yes. And I think that's such a great point, you know, because so, so often people want to take the actions and do the things that are going to, you know, be that quick, quick fix or, you know, to get on the fast track to success. And if you can incorporate mindset and, and meditation into your routine, what starts to happen is success becomes a sustainable journey that you are designing what we were talking about before and not being so reactive to life happening to you, it's happening for you, you know? And so you're just turning, flipping that switch from um, reactor to being proactive. Wow. Yeah, that, that, you know, and, and I, I told you that I, I wouldn't take up a, a ton of your time here today. And, and that last phrase, I, I think was the perfect way for us to put a period on this. Um, but before we before we sign off here, was there anything like that we I didn't ask you here that I, you wish I would have? You know, I think just to share one last point, you know, is um, just being mindful of focusing on the good in your life is such a huge deposit you can make into your mental and internal, you know, bank account. As small as being able to wake up, you know, in the morning and go and participate in this thing that we call life. So that's the last thing I'll say on that. No, I, that's, that's great advice. I, I mean, I, I, I think it's one of those things being grateful. What's, what's, what you already have is, is a great step forward. Um, so everybody, if you want more information uh, and, and want to be in touch with Stacy, make sure you go to limitlesswithstacyb.com. I'll make sure those that contact information is in the show notes. Really appreciate your time today, Stacy. I know, uh, you know, with being a real estate investing podcast, this might not have been exactly what you thought you would have gotten today, but I appreciate you rolling with it. Of course. This was great. I appreciate the opportunity. So, well, thank you again. Thank and you. Uh, I hope we can chat again sometime. I think there's a lot to be to discuss, especially regarding mindset and the importance of. I would love that.